Continuing on with graphing polynomial functions, the last thing that we learned was how to find the zeros of the polynomial function. And now let's figure out how those zeros actually help us to graph that function. So the important thing to know is that graphing the zeros is exactly the same thing as graphing the x-intercepts. The only difference between the zeros and the intercepts are the format that they come in. Zeros come in the answer of x equals a number. And x-intercepts, since those are going to be on the graph, come in the format of an ordered pair, where that number we substitute in for the x value, and zero we substitute in for the y value. Because in solving these zeros or x-intercepts, we let our equation, or we let our y value be equivalent to zero. So we're going to graph our zeros by plotting them on the x-axis. Now another trick to note about zeros is using their multiplicities, which we just discussed last time. If it has an odd multiplicity, then it will go through that x-intercept. It will pass through the x-axis. If it has an even multiplicity, it will touch the x-axis, but it will not go through it. So it'll hit that zero, it'll hit that x-intercept, and it'll bounce back the same direction that it came through. So it will touch it, but does not actually go through the x-axis. So let's look at those three examples that we did in the last video to find their zeros, and let's now plot those on our graph. In example one, we had f of x is equal to negative x to the fourth plus 12x squared minus 27. It was a degree four polynomial, so we came up with four zeros, those boxed there down at the bottom. And now we want to figure out how do these affect our graph. Well, let's first put them in intercept format or ordered pair format. So the first one is negative three zero. The second one is positive three, zero. Then I have positive root three, zero, and negative root three, zero. And those are just listed in the order that I found them from left to right, no particular order. Now, to plot the negative three and the positive three, zero, those are going to be really easy. To plot the other two, we're going to have to come up with our decimal approximation. The square root of 3 is approximately 1.73, and you can find that by typing it in your calculator. So I will graph this one at 1.730, and then I have the negative version of the same thing. So I'm going to plot those four intercepts on my graph. Now, since my largest one is 3, I don't need to do many more tick marks beyond that. So I have negative 3, 0 positive three, zero, negative 1.730, and positive 1.730. So I know it's going to touch the x-axis at all four of these places that I have indicated here. Now with a combination of the end behavior of this graph, as well as all four of these zeros have odd multiplicities, meaning they only have a multiplicity of one. They're only a zero one time. That means it's going to cross through my x-axis at that. So let's look at the end behavior. This one is an negative even, which means it matches, and negative means it's going down in both directions. So at the very left part of this graph, it's going down. And at the very right part of this graph is going down. And since, again, these are all multiplicities, that means it's going to go through these zeros each and every time. So I would assume that this graph is going to look something like this. It's going to cross through it here. It's got to cross through it there. It's got to cross through it here. And it's got to cross through it there. So at my first thought, this is what a sketch of this graph will look like. Now, I have to do much more steps to get more precise, but this just gives me a rough idea. Moving on to example two, I had three zeros, because this was a degree three polynomial, putting them in intercept format. That gives me one zero, negative four zero, and five zero. So let me plot them on my 
x-axis. Again, I don't have any more than five, so my tick marks don't need to go too much beyond five. So my first one at one zero, my second one at negative four zero, and my last one at five zero. Now, to figure out the end behavior of this graph, let me look at all of the leading terms. I have a positive constant here. I have a positive x to the first power there. Same here, same here. So if I multiply all of those, my leading term of this would be a positive one ninth x to the third. So that tells me positive odd. Odds go in opposite directions where the left is going down and the right is going up. Now, since each of my intercepts or my zeros are only multiplicity one, that means they have odd multiplicity, so they will cross through my x-axis at each of these points. So it's got to cross through my x-intercept here, it's got to cross through my x-intercept here, and it's got to cross through my x-intercept there. So that is a very rough sketch of this example. Now, in my third example of finding the zeros, I actually see how multiplicities are going to affect my graph. Let me first give my ordered pairs of 0, 0, 9 halves, 0, or if I want that in decimal format, that's approximately the same thing as 4.5, 0, and 4 fifths, 0, or again, the decimal approximation is 0 0.80. So let me do my tick marks over here on the right. And I can put them on the left, but they're not necessary. So I have an x-intercept at my origin. I have my x-intercept very close to my origin, my 0.8. And then I also have an x-intercept at 4.5, so right here. Now, my end behavior is positive 4x to the third, positive 2x to the fourth, and a negative 5x squared. So if I put all that together, my end behavior of this graph would be, just simplifying using my powers, 2 to the fourth gives me 16x to the fourth, and negative 5 squared gives me 25x to the second power. So multiplying my numbers across, 4 times 16 times 25 gives me 1,600, and this is x cubed, x to the fourth, x squared. I add my exponents, gives me x to the ninth. So this is a positive odd, where it means it goes down on the left and up on the right. Now let me see how these zeros and their multiplicities affect the graph. At my leftmost zero, which is zero, zero, had a multiplicity of three, an odd multiplicity, which means it will cross through my graph at that point. My next zero, going from left to right, is 0 0.80 or 4 fifth zero. That had a multiplicity of two, which means it will not cross through my graph at that point. It will bounce back the same direction it came from. So it's going to cross through at zero, and it's going to bounce back at 0.8. Same thing here with my last zero on the very right, 4.5 or 9 halves. That also has a multiplicity of 4, which means it will touch my x-intercept at 9 halves, but it will not cross through. It will bounce back from the same direction that it came from. So it will bounce back the same direction there, and that matches the end behavior that I had in both directions. So again, a rough sketch of this graph would look like this here, and then I'd have to fill in the rest of the details to get a more precise graph. So this ends this video of figuring out how the zeros affect our graph, and we know that those are the same as the x-intercepts, and if it has an odd multiplicity, it will go through the x-axis at that point. If it has an even multiplicity, then it will touch but not go through the x-axis. It will bounce back from the same direction that it came from. So this is where I'm going to stop this video, and in the last video, I'm going to put all of the pieces to this puzzle together. We'll figure out how end behavior, y-intercepts, zeros or x-intercepts, and any other information that's going to figure out our graph and put all of that together.